Sure, you can say hello. We're in the show. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Let's get all the technical difficulties out of the way at once. We can hear you can hear. and even see oh. you soon. Hi. We can hear hello. you now. Hi. We can't Good. see you, though. <laughs> Do you see us? We can see you. Yeah. You're dressed in black, white shoes, sitting on a red chair. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah. Yes. That's you? That's me. Okay. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm one of Hello. the programmers. Hello. Hi. Okay. So since we can't see you, can you can you introduce yourselves? Sure. Lenai, maybe you start. Oh, I am Lenai from Kenya. Wow. And I am a father. Yeah, my, my name is Robert. I'm I'm the filmmaker. So together with my friend Lenai, <clears throat> we're at the moment actually in in uh, in Kenya. So where the film is situated, the, the you just watched. So um, we're sitting outside. As you can hear, you can maybe hear some goats and cows on the background and an occasional hyena. But we will. Um, apart from that, we're fine. It's uh, it's almost midnight here. Right. Yeah. Thank you for staying up late to talk to us. Oh, don't worry, I wasn't meant to like that. <laughs> um, so I will just start out by asking a question or two, and then we'll turn it over to anyone in the audience who might have questions um, for you, Robert and Lanai. Um, I guess I will just start by um, saying there are so many uh, images made by Europeans um, of the Maasai, you know, it's um, like a highly uh, visual um, tradition, I guess, at this point. Um, so I'm wondering what your feelings are about, like, the value in um, continuing that tradition. It's, it's addressed to me or to Lenai or both? Yeah, to both of you, sure. <laughs> did, you, did you get the question? No. Maybe, could you rephrase or Lenai will take one? Take... So, to sure. summarize, you, you'll you say more or less, it's these, these traditional images we all have seen of the Maasai and we have done, and it's predominantly uh, Western gaze to it. Is that what you're more or less asking? Right, like you're working sort of off this, um, tradition that feels pretty well established now. Um, so what are you, uh, with your collaboration or with your projects, um, what are you uh, adding to it or how are you working within that tradition? Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, if I hand it over to Lenai, do you, do you remember? Because what, what we what you also said in the film is mm -hmm. that this thinking about the Maasai sunset becomes a bit dangerous. Could you maybe just like rephrase? Or do you remember what? Yeah, like uh, uh, pertaining with the film, as you you have seen, mm -hmm. uh, we are really Maasai. So we are doing what exactly the Maasai were doing before. And if up to now they're still doing it, but uh, we are having like uh, new things which are coming on, like uh, education, and it is uh, really affecting the cultural uh, ceremonies and also Christianity. People are coming up with the churches, so they like uh, collaboration of uh, Maasai culture with the church. So uh we uh on, on the images you have seen or the video yeah we are we are we are really trying or we are still doing the way the masses were doing before this exactly mm -hmm. yeah what the masses were doing before so the value um for you is to sort of mark the changes over time yeah well 
it, and it's then, also a little bit of, yeah. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to uh, ask you, Robert, because you say in the film that um, like it worries you that your uh, work might be considered a kind of blueprint or um, I think that was your turn of phrase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, the thing is, um, that's also, for example, why, why I included um, it's uh, so the, the, the main line in the last part and so detours is about the Eonoto ceremony. So one of the major ceremonies they have here every seven years. Mm -hmm. um, so the brothers are looking back or uh, have been looking at, at the ceremony of their father. So that's like 21 years ago at the time they're talking about it. And at that time they were completely naked. So they can't even imagine they would have to take part in a ceremony. So things are changing all the time. And the interesting thing, of course, is with your introduction question is what am I adding to it? Is, is um, I'm adding a dynamic image to the static image of, of, of the mass eyes not changing because that's a little bit the idea of the Western idea of uh, mm -hmm. these people jumping around. They still do that. But the meaning to it has changed quite a lot. And um, I mean, the, the ceremony by itself, the meaning is, hasn't changed much, but the, um, the, the display or the features in it uh, really have changed um, considerable. And I think it, overall, it would be very interesting. That's also why I included the, the discussion we had. Um, it's like your, your Maasai yourself. So how do you how do you look at your image how do you look at, the, at how it changes is that they they really have themselves have the idea it is slipping away and um i'm not sure if that's really correct or not but it it is interesting to um um at least to document it for example the first ceremony i filmed was also an Ionoto ceremony that's in 2005. so i can see a major difference in for example there are no morans anymore you know, the, mm -hmm. the one and the, and the Maasai with the long hair. So this ceremony uh, only had a few left. So, I mean, um, they're, they're in, the, in the seven years to come now, they will have a different kind of ceremony, completely different from what is meant to be is Morans to become junior elders. They still will have this demarcation in their life, but with a different kind of meaning. But um, uh, there's an image coming on the background. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um trying yeah i was a little bit distracted so i hopefully it was a bit clear with my answer if you have more yeah yeah well that yeah. just made me think too about um maybe what what your thoughts both of you are about that idea of preservation like of you know how that functions like if that is a function of the film or like you know the sort of dual um function of uh preservation but also like destruction through that, right? Like making an image um, in order to preserve. Um, yeah, uh, that's what, but in a way exactly that what, what I'm. Yeah, what I meant with the blueprint is is a little bit the danger is that um, um, it is going to be seen as a sort of textbook. So you know, uh, it's easy when you have a film and just this is how the way you actually. So that's a little bit my fear, but also. Um, I think it, it it would not help anyone to have the idea that a film is, is some sort of uh, preservation or archive. It should be more an archive of something that it is changing all the time, that is very dynamic in, in, in character than the idea that, you know, we just, um, okay, so um, looking at the film, uh, this is uh, the ceremony, how we have to conduct it in, in this order or something like that. That would be, mm -hmm. I think, uh, uh, th that would be more, more adding to the danger that Nani was talking about, that uh, then it, you, you end up um, preserving something also, but also uh, looking at it in a very static way. Right. I'm going to see if there are any questions from folks who are here in the audience. Um, and if there yeah, are... But anyway, are... before... Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the other thing I can add on, on it is that uh, 
you know we have been doing these ceremonies not intentionally for somebody to come and film so we mm -hmm. used to do the ceremony whether there is a filmmaker or there is no and then automatically because we are now uh, uh, very uh, close friends or having contacts uh, with my friend robert so sometimes when the ceremony is almost to, to begin we i used to contact him to come if he's willing to come and film but so that means that uh, the ceremony has been going on whether there will be anyone to film or not mm -hmm. i'm gonna see if anyone out there wants okay oh wow <laughs> there they are we can Just, see you now check, 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 okay. Check. Good, okay good 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 <laughs> Check, 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 check. check. Oh, do you Kurt. want to sing us? No, do you want to check one, two? So, Emmett, if you have a question, I think I can reach you with this. Hi, I was curious about the animation at the beginning and uh, your intention with the use of that. Yeah. Um, it's uh, So the film, the, the title is All Eyes on Me, and it has, of course, uh, a few uh, meanings. First of all, it is Martin Coy, the, the other brother, but he's still at the sleep at the moment, who, um, who uh, was very much inspired by Tupac. And everyone is drawing um, absolute things that he's done and um, has the album on it. Um, you had the little boy, which is, uh, at that time, I was really focused. I, I was just beginning as a documentary filmmaker observational style so please do not look into the camera you know uh, pretend that you at least don't see it and he did quite the opposite he was just um, dissecting us so me and, and the sound guy and uh, to have uh, his look if you follow his eyes that's what you see in the animation so what he sees is, is that's the drawing so to have these double perspectives so his perspective but also uh, us looking at him in one one idea so that's the the idea of the of the animation thank you good any other questions yes i think eric's going to bring you a mic hang on one second pray that it works. hi oh maybe not no. <laughs> that mic's been giving us trouble Actually, we could hear it. Yeah, they're gonna. Yeah, I can repeat it if you wanna. Yeah. So she's uh, she's saying that she was struck by the oh, the scene in the film where you're the three of you are discussing whether or not to show the film. Communities, hi. The community's perception of the archival footage that you show in a film and the perception of the film that you're making. Whether there's any critical stance on the old archival footage you've been showing, either from you or from the community. And I guess how the perception of the movie is Yeah, so the last part was how the perception of the of the moving image, the older, the archival footage might have changed with, um, with your film. Right. Um, maybe just summarize because I mean. So I think. Right. So there's all these archival images that uh, don't have, you know, that are like you were saying, more sort of observational, maybe in style, Robert. And um, oh, 
Uh, <laughs> Should we wait a second and see if it can come back? <laughs> yeah. Figures we get one thing working and then <laughs> lose another. Oh, <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, should we try your question again, Camilla? <laughs> uh, I wonder if I can reach. Hmm. Let's see how far we can get. Might be better to bring up a reliable. I, I try this like simple, simple way this way. I wondered whether the perception of the community has changed in regards to the old archival films that you've been using in the film now that they have participated in your movie. That's probably the simplest way of putting it. Mm, all right. Maybe you add it. Do, do you get the question, Lenny? No. So the, the, the old video I showed, for example, of the your note of your father. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, that's archival footage. Mm -hmm. uh, does that Has that changed the, for, for, for you and others here in the community? Now you have participated in, in this film, in the current film. So meaning, do you maybe look differently at the archival footage? Okay. Yeah, uh, there is uh, some things that have changed. When I see the footage of my father's ceremony, although I don't remember, because even my mother was not married at that moment. So uh, I have seen very much, it is very much different. Like uh, they are going to the ceremony when they are naked. And our ceremony, we are not going where we are naked. So that is the two different things. But the, the process or the the rule that is being used at the Manyata and uh, by using by the ceremony, it is the same. We are just doing the same. If it is four days, like for example, two white, three red, or two red, it is the same for them and it is the same for us. Also, we were we were we were having uh, new things like Morans with long hair at our time and Morans with short hair. They were not having Morans with short hair. They were all having long hair. No Morans who went to school, and in our time we have Morans who went to school. So these are some of the differences. We were also having politicians. Invited, invited to the Manyata and or the filmmakers, although they they were they have also. So these are just some of the different things. 
Yeah, and if I may add, also I think maybe also to your uh, question of uh, if if it's really a, a difference from them to look at the archival footage and now, as you probably have seen in in the, in the second film, I'm all over. It's slightly sensitive, so I cannot. The film hasn't been spread widely among the community because it's still culturally a, a taboo to to show images of of the late. So it is, um, you know, uh, as the discussion I had in the film, and it, it's part of it. So now you're aware of, of the sensitivity and also the, the the reason that we can show it outside of the community, but. Um, I mean, many, many other parts of the of the film I've shown. For example, the the, the first ceremony I filmed, uh, 2005, I never uh, showed it around here, uh, because then you you would see I, I, it would would be a violation, a uh, cultural a violation of a rule. But also, I mean, in in respect to to the family and also the, certainly the mother. Um, so this film, for example, the one you watch now, hasn't been um, spread around here, so they don't know. In, in relation then to the archive footage. What I want to say about the archive of footage is it's very popular in general. YouTube, if you would look at the statistics, I think you would have a high score around here in Kenya, certainly in Loita area, of all the videos you find on YouTube on Maasai related topics. So it's very popular, even in the small matatus, so the small minibus taxis you have from this place to the nearest city, they have this one display and they're very often showing doesn't really matter how old it is, but they will show anything which is Maasai related and culturally related. So the more singing, the more dancing, the more popular it is. Oh, a question. We might need, wait. Um, this is just a bit of a follow-up question to Lanai. Um, in the movie, you seem to not feel that showing it was a good idea. You and your brother talked uh, into the camera and said, mm, no, probably not. And what changed your mind? Why, why are you okay with showing it now? Or are you only okay with showing it uh, far away from your community? Thank you for your question. Yeah, you know, uh, it is taboo for sure. And even myself at the beginning, I, I didn't want to see because it was, uh, he died when he was very young. We were young, all of us. And then it was like uh, bringing to our minds, which it will very much, it will be very hard to our heart. So, uh and i was also thinking of my mother if my mother sees she might uh, see, be sick or cry and i don't want her to cry so that's why i was saying no it is impossible but because it was not it is not the only one who passed away many on the footage have been uh, not alive and it is also a must to be seen but i i urge maybe to show somewhere away from uh, our community or even our family, especially our family. So that's why I, I, I was saying maybe it is good to show, but not to our family, especially my mother. Any last question? Oh, yes. Hi, this is a question for both of you, although maybe well, and I uh, could answer it more specifically because you said at one point that business had come into uh, your culture. And I'm just wondering what the relationship is uh, between culture and business and the government and tourism and, and all of that. Thanks. Yeah, like, uh, what I, I was meaning is that there is a, a pop, uh, especially politicians who are coming to ask for votes, and because people are living together, they can sometimes come with something like food to help their families who are living in the Manyata. And um, some tourists also wants to see the Manyata and 
they need to give something to the Manyata. And uh, also, uh, those are some of the things I was uh, referring that uh, sometimes there is culture and there's business. Yeah, maybe if I uh, add a little bit to it, maybe not so much to the business side, but the political side, but it's also business, is um, if you are a politician, so the constitution changed in Kenya. So now it's really important to have people backing you, voting for you. So before it was not important to visit your electorate. So now it, if you want to um, have a large gathering, it's technically uh, very smart to visit one of the ceremonies. So actually in this in, in the ceremony I filmed in 2019, twice a politician came once with a helicopter once with um, in such a way that the, the whole ceremony had to stop so he could ha deliver his political speech and then everyone could continue it is it is um i mean if you want a thousand uh, of people to attend your political speech it's it's the right place to be and then you have the leadership within uh, who's organizing the, the ceremony they benefit from it uh, from the connection with the politician. So there is a clear connection between leadership and, and it has uh, also a business kind of value. Uh, uh, one, For example, one of the rumors here is one of the leaders of that ceremony at that time in connection to the politicians now had the capacity uh, or the means to build uh, a beautiful house on top of a hill. And, uh, and it's quite clear where it came from. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, yep. One last question from Toma. So Robert, it sounds like you've been with the community there for a long time, right? We were here in 2005 and then 2015, 19. We saw some texts maybe from the time of the lockdown. Um, so my question is, when did you decide that it was time to stop filming for this specific film? And then what were some of the formal choices that you made? Because probably the, the historical marker that we recognize are the WhatsApp messages from the lockdown. But what other maybe historical or, or um, community significant or, or markers that are significant for the community? Um, informed your process, basically. Why did you stop at the time that you stopped? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it's the, uh, slightly the other way around. Is uh, I actually only started to make a film uh, recently. So before I was filming and I was so involved in what I saw that I, uh, I, I was really flabbergasted by my own footage when I, I was sitting in the editing and, and it paralyzed me in a sense. I was unable to make a film other than the other, the, like the really classical anthropological, okay, this is a ceremony, it starts on day one and it ends at day seven, and this is, happens in, in between. So now I, I really wanted to make a film differently, also uh, looking at what, what I, um, also relating to the first question maybe, it's just like how is is the imagery that I have, the way I look, I look at them, is that also, very much still this western gaze or is it um so that was a little bit the exercise i i i started because i have an enormous archive i start filming here in 2005 um probably with uh, uh i hate it of, of of a few years but almost every year i came back and uh this was just an exercise in 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 uh, in um in what stereotypes are there and how can I play with it? Uh, because the other marker you're talking about, for example, you can see the WhatsApp messages. Uh, yeah. Actually, the so it's 2019 Christmas evening, just a hut, you can't see it, it's completely dark, but it's five meters from here, uh, where we were, uh, that's the first one, it's like dog's dinner. And then we were talking about it uh, afterwards. Uh, so when Corona all hit us, that's only four months later, uh, when I start editing. Um, I think, uh, for example, in the second film, you can see that I, I'm telling that I'm, I filmed the ceremony in 2005, and now something happened in April. So that's 2007 when, when the late passed away. Uh, maybe I should have 
indicated that more clearly because also the, the, the question to what changed for Lanai is also time has, this is 14 years later that we are talking about and that, for example, it's actually Martin Coy, the other brother, who really decided it's time for, for the world to know that we also had a late brother and especially I wanted to, uh, to, to, to show it to my children. Um, and then the last one, I play around a lot with, with uh, perception, but uh, so it's, uh, it's uh, mainly the ceremony in 2005, 2019. And then during lockdowns, all the conversations you're hearing is through Zoom and through lockdown, I recorded it and started talking about the images uh, we, or, or about the, the film I uh, was planning to make. Um, so that's a little bit the the markers, I think. If 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 am I correct? Yeah. Sorry, it's a little bit late for us. So um, hope it is, <laughs> was a little bit you know, the 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 answer you expected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, we will, and I think that was the last question. I don't want to cut anyone off, but we will let you both go to sleep. Lanai and Robert, thank you so much for joining us and for sticking it out through the technical difficulties. We really appreciate it talking to you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for, for, for watching our film and having these uh, two, two intelligent questions for us to answer at this very moment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Mm. And thank you all. We do have a, oh, that's off now. Well, we have a program at four, bodies and sleep four. Uh, there's one filmmaker who will do a Q&A. Um, he made the first film in the program, Sticklet Weaver.